Buzz around, setting things ablaze and hurling chunks of ice at your enemies. The Swarm Blade Druid is a DPS form, and with this build, you'll dash around quickly dispatching anything in your way. Druids have some of the best mitigation any passive tree has to offer, and this melee spellcaster hybrid is one of the most fun choices you can play. The gameplay is incredibly simple. First thing you can do is use Dive, and this is actually going to proc the Maelstrom around you, dealing some additional damage, but more importantly, as you get more of these stacks, you'll gain haste and frenzy as well. The next ability you'll use is Arm Blade Slash, and this is the main source of damage, or at least the method in which we proc the damage that we'll be dealing. The entire rest of the build is automatic or passively procced, and you can see here not only do we have substantial mitigation, but solid regeneration or leech as well in this build. Use the dive for mobility or simply to make your runs quicker. As mentioned, it'll proc Maelstorm, which is going to do some additional damage and get you two really strong buffs for this particular build. Time for that, you just walk around up to enemies, hitting them with the arm blade slash and letting the tornadoes proc, dealing the remainder of the damage the build has to offer. Neither Swarm Strike or Summon Hive are used in this particular build, so you can just ignore them altogether. It makes this build really easy to play as mentioned. Reverting back into human form isn't required either. In fact, we can have 100% uptime in the Swarm Blade form as we get higher level with this build. Swarm Blade has several options that you can choose from depending on the preference of the type of build that you prefer. You can play Fire and Cold as you're seeing in this video. You can play a Lightning version. You can even play a physical version as well. The Fire and Ice version is going to be a lot more friendly to beginning or new players because there aren't going to be any required or build defining items for this particular version. I mean, you can play this whenever you like and then transition into one of the stronger versions later on if you prefer. In this particular version, we're running Avarice, and this is an item that you get automatically for completing the quest in the main story. This will give you a substantial amount of leech to help the character survive. The main driving factor between which version is the most successful for your character will largely depend on the weapons that you have. Colnevar's Claim and also Tempest Maw are the strongest two weapons for any of these elements, in my opinion. However, if you don't yet have the uniques and legendary potential to use the Lightning version, the Fire and Ice version performs just fine in the early empowered monoliths. Let's talk about the basic synergies that that this build has to offer, and this will help explain the gameplay too as well. Again, only two buttons makes it incredibly easy to play, but there's a lot going on, and you're going to know how all this works in case you want to change the elements that you're using. First thing to keep in mind is that when you use the dive ability or the dash skill, this is going to proc a number of Maelstorm stacks. Not only does this increase your damage, but it has the ability to proc both haste and frenzy. Viper's Call will allow your Serpent Strike tree to apply to the Arm Blade Slashes. This is going to dramatically boost the skill, and one of the most important parts of this is that the Calling Point ability is going to have a kill threshold of 18%. In addition to that, the Serpent Strike tree will offer us some other nice things as well. We'll get some increased attack speed, we'll get a dodge from a couple of sources, we'll have armor shred, we'll have the ability to freeze the targets. All this is really just going to add to what we can do in that particular form. You'll sustain your mana pool or rage once we're transformed, and we'll do this through a couple of nodes here. As you attack enemies, you'll also generate tornadoes, and this is going to increase the damage of the build dramatically. The tornadoes, which we've altered to be fire, will actually cast out storm bolts, which deal cold damage. So here you can start to see the theme of the build. Since we're talking fire tornadoes, this is an item worth mentioning. 30% chance to cast stationary fire tornadoes at a nearby enemy. This is obviously a DPS increase. However, be careful that this doesn't oom you or deplete all of your rage. Keep in mind that the storm bolts can actually proc that chance on hit, meaning you'll often have tornadoes in spots that you aren't ready to attack. A large source of the rage sustain that we have with this build is through the fast arm blade slashes that we have. So if we have a tornado up or we're casting these as we're running by, it'll deplete our rage without any ability to it. On maps with a lot of high health enemies or good density like you're seeing here, it's really easy to keep that rage up. However, if you get sections where you're not able to attack frequently, you'll just notice that you run out of rage. This also makes this item really strong for bosses when you know you'll have solid uptime on the target. Ultimately, what I find best is to swap this item in and out for the bosses when you don't need that regeneration or leech effect that the Avarice provides. Then you can have additional damage on the bosses where more of the factor is just avoiding the mechanic. The Talent Tree will increase the duration that the tornadoes last and most importantly will take Eye of the Storm. This is going to make that tornado follow you. This is really tremendous benefit to the skill. This makes the tornado chase after you and it has a very large radius, meaning that it'll hit a lot of enemies on the screen near you at the same time. Oftentimes, either the tornado or just the storm bolts that it has will actually take out a lot of the weaker enemies as you run down, really improving the clear speed of this build. Whenever you cast a tornado, you'll gain increased movement speed, increased attack speed, and increased cast speed as well. All benefits for this build allow you to get more arm blade slashes and allow you to proc more tornadoes more frequently. Aside from the two buffs that Maelstorm has to offer when we have a number of stacks will also have the ability to get storm bolts through this tree as well. The various elements in which storm bolt will use can be altered through the gathering storm palant tree as well. You can use physical, you can use cold as we're using in the example, or the default lightning for this additional damage that comes from the tornadoes. At low levels, if you happen to get removed from storm blade form, you'll want to use gathering storm for the brief moment until you're able to get back into it. Gathering storm is going to give you storm stacks, which essentially cast storm bolts on their own. Druids in general get tons of survivability 
through their passive tree. Whether this comes in the form of resistances, additional health, reduced damage taken from nearby enemies, or even an aspect that reduces the damage you take even further, there's really no shortage of additional survivability that you can get, with the final nodes in the druid tree providing hide skin, additional health, and endurance threshold, and impervious, another method of reducing the damage that you take. With survivability accounted for, we want to make sure that we're dealing enough damage as well. Now this is a melee build that uses its attacks in order to actually proc some spells. So regardless of which element you're choosing to play, you want to make sure that you have enough spell damage as well. You get some additional damage through the passive tree, but you want to make sure you're making choices for your gear that are going to complement the build as well. Here, increased elemental damage over time will benefit a number of varieties of the build that you may choose to play. Fire penetration is obviously great for the tornado skills, and the additional cold damage is going to help with that swarm blade since we're benefiting from the serpent strike that's been transformed to cold. You can choose to put a passive point in order to dual wield. That's a great combination, which works well for the lightning as you can get spell damage from one weapon and additional melee benefit from the other. Alternatively, if you don't want to take that increased damage that you take while dual wielding, you can look for something like a staff that's going to give you melee damage and spell damage at the same time. In the other slots, you'll want to look towards pushing your resist towards the cap and at the same time increasing things like spell damage, elemental damage, increased damage over time, and even an item with solid critical strike avoidance is really nice to complement one of your passives. Harmonious Wisdom is going to give you additional attunement, which is great for amplifying the damage of the build, but in addition to that, you're going to get critical strike avoidance per five attunement that you have. Prismatic Gaze is a unique option if you're fortunate enough to find it. This will help boost the massive critical strike chance that you have with this build up to enormous heights. The remainder of the slots can be filled with rares if you're still leveling, exalted, or even various uniques that you have. Again, look for things that benefit the build. Idols with additional health and resistance on them are absolutely fantastic, and on top of that, idols with increased critical strike chance are going to help us sustain our rage when we're shapeshifted as well and increase the damage of the build. Increased spell damage or even increased spell damage when transformed are going to be beneficial as well, so keep an eye out for a number of idols that you may find. Regardless of which element you choose to play with this build, it's a lot of fun, and I can't recommend it enough. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch, and have a great day.